चैप्टर टेन माई मेथडोलॉजी ऑफ द एवोल्यूशनरी प्रोसेस डिटैच येट केयरफुल इन माई कुटीर देर आर मैनी बिग ट्रंक्स विद हंड्रेड ऑफ वैल्यूएबल बुक्स आर्टिकल्स एंड ड्रेसेस आई डो नॉट नो द एग्जैक्ट कंटेंट्स ऑफ द ट्रंक्स आई डो नॉट हैव एनी कीज विद मी आई डो नॉट कीप एनी थिंग एज सीक्रेट आई कैन नॉट ईट एनी थिंग इन प्राइवेट आई डो नॉट प्रिटेंड टू बी ए वैरागी विद एम्प्टी हैंड्स एक्सपेक्टिंग अदर्स टू कीप इनफ फॉर माई पर्सनल यूज When I traveled on propaganda tours I kept enough money with me in two or three pockets I gave separate purses with plenty of money to those who accompanied me I am very careful in keeping things like fountain pen spectacles study books and various articles contributed by all great men and devotees Previously when I locked my kutir for a short brisk walk I kept the key carefully tied at the end of my cloth I may use a torn coat with patches but I must give others the superior quality of articles. I do not worry about debts. I find necessary support spontaneously coming from the divine source. I feel the grace of the Lord at every step. I feel the presence of the Lord at all times behind all names and forms. Sadhna till the end of life. The sadhus and yogis do sadhana and study for some time. and then give up the habit when they get a little name and fame it is a great pity that is the reason for their no, for their downfall sadhus and perfected mahatmas should continue sadhana till the last moment of their lives then only will it be possible to keep up the divine consciousness that will be a fine example and a source of inspiration to others also the saint need not talk and preach his life itself is a scripture to illumine the world even today i write om 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 and hari om tat sat mantras in all my letters i fill up half a page of my letter with the mantra or with philosophical ideas before commencing to write anything in a notebook or letters to student or to th- students i write the mantra i do about 5 or 6 items of sadhana all the 24 hours japa meditation exercises including asana and pranayama worship study writing work and service to the world help to mahatmas the sick and the poor thus i charge my mind with divine consciousness all the times at all times i nicely combine rest and relaxation with deep breathing exercises I have thus spent my 35 years of life at Rishikesh and derived wonderful fresh spiritual energy and strength in abundance. I maintain a high standard of health and enjoy peace and bliss at every moment. I just come out come out of my kutir for 1 hour in the morning and manage all the affairs of the ashram and give work to those who live in the ashram and think of others who live at distant places. and yet i feel i can work for another 10 hours every day the secret is my systematic sadhana and the grace of the lord why so many photographs in holy temples the authorities do not permit the taking of photographs of the idols in badri and kedar people do not allow cameras to be taken inside the temples it is strange some of the sages and great men of india have serious objection to taking their photographs they think that the spiritual power will be diminished by taking photographs i do not believe at all in such things i allow anyone anyone to take any number of pictures while sitting running walking talking eating playing swimming in the ganga in meditation study or worship at the temple when devotees look at a picture they get inspiration books and magazines have a special charm with the addition of a series of pleasant and instructive pictures i do not have any restriction i find only good in everything great men from all countries come to the ashram sincere devotees from all parts of the world come and stay with me for some months or years they all desire to have a copy of my photo in their company why should i unnecessarily refuse and displease them groups of students who come to rishikesh during vacation desire to have a group photo with myself in the center 
I have been photographed with the great men of the world, Maharajas, sages and saints, devotees, ashram workers, the sick persons in, in the hospital and the school children. I have been photographed with my hat and suit, a loin cloth and an overcoat, with a turban like a schoolmaster, in a motor car, aeroplane and a bullock cart in Rameshwaram during my All India tour in 1950 and in a cycle rickshaw during my stay at Roorkee in 1953. I make no distinction in having photographs with Maharajas or devotees or coolies at the railway station platform, with great Mahatmas of the Himalayas or the scavengers of the ashram. I have included the lively monkeys, cats, dogs of the ashram, fish, cows, elephants and cheetahs also. I do not believe in the statement that my spiritual powers will be lost or influenced by the evil eye. I look at the wonderful benefits the world would derive. I enjoy when I find people around me feel happy and cheerful. Self-Reliance I personally attended to my work such as cleaning the room, bringing water from the Ganga for drinking purposes, washing cloths and vessels, going to the Kshetra for my arms. I myself used to type my articles and letters to aspirants. I ca carefully packed the packets and posted them. I never depended on my students. I did not like them to enter my kutir frequently and disturb my daily routine. When I go out on tour, I myself carry my luggage. When porters carry some of my heavy packages of leaflets and books for free distribution, I pay them liberally. I pity those rich persons who fight with the porters and coolies at the platform for the sake of two annas. When the work in the ashram multiplied, I could not find time to attend to this kind of work. Since his students came forward to attend to some of these works, as selfless service brings about purification of the heart, I permitted them to do this work and to serve other Mahatmas and sick persons. I carefully attended to the needs of the visitors and the inmates. I personally saw that they had their hurricane lanterns, then there was no electricity, cots, beds, books for study in their rooms and that they got their timely tea, milk and food. Now hundreds of students have come to the ashram. Things go on in an, in an organized method automatically. I silently sit, watch and enjoy the grace of the Lord. I supervise every section of work and give instructions to all the members and fix up able hands in charge of all departments of work. Even people without any ability or qualification quickly pick up their work in a short period when I give them full liberty and responsibility and show confidence in them. A purpose behind everything. I am by nature serious. Even today I am very serious in my sadhana, study and service. Nothing can, nothing can disturb me from my concentration and peace. I can remain blissful and attend to my work steadily under all circumstances. Sometimes to elevate the depressed, to cheer up the dull, I appear to be humorous. I make joke and play with my students and visitors and make them laugh like children. But behind every joke, fun and humor there is a purpose. I have a limit for everything. Every action or word has a definite purpose in the evolution of the, of the people around me. Through fun and humor, through presentation of biscuits, fruits and clothes, I found, find out the taste, temperament and weakness of the students and teach them a way to get over their difficulties and defects. I am dead against gossip, giggling and guffaw. I ask my students to avoid loose talk and to live alone with introspection of, or work. When they go out to bath in the Ganga or for meals or for a walk in the evening, I ask them to go alone and to do Japa. Simple living and generosity. I am economical. I do not spend much on my personal needs. I have lived for years a hard life by depending on the Kshetra food. I am very happy when I lead a rough and hard life. Simple living helps in high thinking and getting mastery over mind and body. Even today I love the arms I get from the Kshetra and use torn cloths. I always hammer the mind with the words Kaupina Vantaha Khalu 
bhagyavanta blessed are the dispassionate i live in a rented building by the side of the holy ganga even though there are many palatial buildings in the ashram with all comforts and conveniences there is a special joy in simple living but i do not suffer in the name of tapas when there is a need for certain items for the improvement of the ashram or any individual evolution i insist on the needful being done immediately at every step i think of the welfare of the world and the evolution of the aspirants when devotees give me valuable items and sweets with great devotion i accept them with great love and affection i use them to to please the donors or give them away at once to deserving people when i serve and help others i want the best quality in everything when i get a superior fountain pen coat a shawl or an easy chair immediately i want to give similar items to all the workers and important persons in the ashram i await a chance to purchase the items as in a growing institution where dynamic work is carried on with voluntary donation it is difficult to find finance immediately i wait for opportunities i attend to the needs of all the inmates of the ashram one by one when i get sweets or fruits i do not eat anything secretly in my kutir i carry the bundle to the satsang hall and distribute them to the people assembled there and then take a small portion at the end as prasad even with my diabetes trouble sometimes i take a lot of sweets brought by devotees with so much of devotion love and affection i am not affected at all not a slave of fashion and style i do not know fashion or style this is a curse i do not live for sensual enjoyment it is the product of maya delusion the way of the egoistic and the ignorant i always wear my dhoti above my knees from the way of dress walk talk and behavior i can easily fa- find out the ego in different persons and prescribe methods to destroy it sometimes i wear a turban and keep a long walking stick in swargashram when i had my evening walk i kept the long walking stick i used that as yoga danda for changing the flow of breath from one nostril to another and thus maintain the swar sadhana in my earlier days i never used shoes or umbrella one's attitudes ways and manners become entirely different by the constant use of shoes walking stick and umbrella evolution for everybody sadhanas differ according to the stage of evolution the strength of ego weaknesses and the nature of the lower self a strong and sturdy constitution and a fine health are in themselves a good qualification for the student all other qualifications can be developed when one is placed in favorable favorable environments in the spiritual path any type of student can progress and evolve if he is endowed with shraddha sincerity and faith there is no need for special talents or qualification there is no need also for a deep study for years and japa on one leg for decades a willing loving heart is what is needed scavenging typing writing carrying water nursing the sick helping the poor all these forms of service can be converted as yoga with the right mental attitude the student must have a new angle of vision and try to crush the ego at each step by discipline discrimination and dispassion charge the mind with divine consciousness through constant japa prayers and systematic meditation personal attention and liberal disposition the kitchen is the fight- fighting center in an ashram all sorts of troubles and misunderstanding hatred and jealousy among workers emanate from the kitchen i can easily find out the taste temperament and spiritual progress and control of the senses of the students from the stories i hear from the kitchen side that is the main center of disturbance in an ashram but it is the best field for a quick spiritual evolution of the workers for developing cosmic love sympathy mercy patience generosity people are well trained to adjust and adapt themselves here in a marvelous way due to the large number of inmates and the heavy rush of visitors arrangement has been made for the supply of a common type of food in abundance two or three varieties to suit the various tastes of the people of different provinces in india and of other countries in a humorous manner i say to the people if you do not get ghee take milk if milk is not available 
ask for butter milk if this is not obtainable take take plenty of ganga water they should not murmur one has to be very cautious in adjusting and adapting to various circumstances if one wishes to enjoy peace i ask them not to think much of their body or bread or beard they all should constantly think of the all pervading brahman i pay special attention to supplying energizing food and fruits to some of the workers in the ashram who are busy with responsible work or intense silent sadhana to those who need more nutrition i send special fruits biscuits and butter to their own kutis i serve them anast their health must not suffer in the name of tapasya in the same manner i carefully attend on the visitors also they cannot change their habits in a day at the ashram they may that may affect their health and they cannot do any kind of sadhana if they make a sudden drastic change in their food and dress and relaxation i do not therefore insist on strict rules and restrictions regarding diet for anyone even if there is some bad habit like that of tea coffee and smoking i allow them to continue their ways for some time when they attain mental purity and will power all evil habits drop by themselves the mysterious influence of the ashram atmosphere has its own effect also this sort of freedom given to the aspirants enables even a dull type of aspirant to feel quite at home in the ashram and to plunge himself in dynamic work and to develop his hidden faculties particularly in regard to the sick persons i am very liberal when fruits are not available in the local bazaar i send a special messenger even to delhi the spending a lot for bringing oranges for the patients in the hospital a stitch in time saves nine no compulsion but full liberty i permit people to have their own ways and to f- work in any field suitable to their taste and inclination for some time and create in them a natural taste for the right line of work and sadhana i do not compel anyone some of the letters i wrote in 1938 to one of my students will explain the method of my work and my consideration for the welfare and temperamental per- preferences of my students you are in need of plenty of rest you will have it as soon as the present work is finished you do not work hard there is no hurry take your own time do not work unnecessarily about anything i will take all responsibilities mistakes on my head you do not worry anything about the activities of the divine life society whatever little help you can do you may do in future if you want you have done enough now be cheerful and happy may i send you some more money for your expenses after finishing one or two books you can return to rishikesh but one suggestion take rest for two weeks in a village completely stop all printing work then join the work if you stay for a month or two you can do some solid work for two years you can remain in rishikesh without going out if your health permits you can consider this point or come to rishikesh at once it is left to you to decide everything is left to your convenience and discretion i will not connect your name with the divine life society you can help me if you want without any label whenever you find time whenever you like you are ever free i am marking you are enslaving me through your real affection don't have any moha for this body of mine become independent i have made you free i can help you more when you are away i do not wish anyone to work with me work with me for a long period don't be afraid of work you can go to uttarkashi next year you need not attend to any work be but prepare and train able hands to continue your work there are good persons here who are saturated with and absorbed in the typewriter pray do not stop my book work let there be some series of books ad infinitum i am sure people will run after my books for the practical lessons and guidance given there the way to get things done in the past i maintained a memorandum notebook to enter the items of work i entrusted to various workers i call this whip even if due to pressure of work students forgot the items i did not leave them until the work has completed uh, until the work was completed politely i used to remind them often but this was done in a way humorous and charged with affection 
and no was was no one was displeased with me when i sent several reminders for the same work for the tamsik type of persons i wrote stiff letters also but at the end i added a few lines of advice to make them cheerful and happy some of the original letters are reproduced below first i inquire about their health and spiritual progress and then ask about the work interested how do you do do you keep up burning the divine flame even amidst amidst various activities in remembering his name feeling his presence everywhere and seeing him in all faces work hard meditate do swadhyay don't talk much don't mix don't be curious for news go for a walk alone in the evening do not neglect to maintain the spiritual diary that is your guru by your side write hari om mantra 10 times at the top of your letters this is an easy sadhana for self realization remembering god during intense activities kindly take great care of your health be regular in your japa meditation and study change your nature and habit gradually hope you are keeping good health with brahma chintan along with karma yoga one what about signs of pranayam is it ready why are why you are silent on this subject kindly send me a set of final proofs i hope you are okay have smaran of ram krishna or shiva along with your work you will become a yogi and a jani this is easy yoga for you amidst amidst various activities draw inner energy and peace through silent meditation at least for a few minutes in the early morning i have to reiterate again and again world is a dream jalam jagaliri of mind it is brahma mere appearance your atman satchidanand assert deny body with great effort you get yourself established in this bhav feel i am one ekam chidakash akhand brahman the self of all beings i am sakshi i am akarta stamp out the hissing indriyas and vasanas this is the upanishadic essence quite sufficient to destroy ignorance send me a report of how you spend all the 24 hours of the day please i never forget the spiritual interests of my students and continuously remind them of the purpose of life and the importance of sadhana even though they may have a lot of hard work a uh, lot of work to do for the divine mission here is another letter this world is dirg swapna you are vyapak atma be established in this one idea i have to emer on this point very often acknowledge the article sat guru mani mala if you don't do this reminders after reminders will be sent to you until i get answer to avoid this boring yes say yes received sat guru mani mala this will save a lot of time and energy i have written to you several times for compiling all my letters to you in a book form just a little trimming repeated portions and selecting of the lessons useful to aspirants i have not received an answer from you if you are not inclined to do this work now i shall wait this will not tax you much you can do it slowly message of cheer i don't believe in scandal mongering pardon even the worst sinner there is hope for everybody to improve and progress in the spiritual path i want my disciples to be strong bold and cheerful i want them to carry on dynamically the mission of the lord my letters attest this attitude don't waste your energy in worrying unnecessarily our work is increasing by leaps and bounds shall we attend to the scandal and criticisms or proceed on with our yogic activities forget forgive forgive even if people advertise you with a lady by your side in daily papers i won't believe it is the mischief of scandal mongers even if i catch you red handed with a lady i will excuse you there these are all mistakes only in the path and not heinous crimes i will tell you don't do this in future march on in the path of light you are unnecessarily bothering yourself i wanted to send you a telegram to cheer you up 
you have to do many ennobling works i am preparing the ground paving the way for your sp future spiritual activities i wish many students like you will crop up in india to help the world be bold be always cheerful proclaim the truth everywhere stand up gird up the loins and preach vedanta yoga bhakti everywhere don't worry yourself even a bit no one in the world can hurt you are invincible roll like a lion on any platform resting on truth the slight defects in you will soon vanish don't bother in the atman there is purity it is niranjan spotless tha art niranjan stick to this idea the impurities will vanish this is the positive method of eliminating or eradicating defects strength joy peace bliss immortality is your very nature assert and realize attitude towards vilification here is a letter addressed in 1937 to one of my students who published a pamphlet attacking the founder of a famous ashram in punjab i came to know that you have published a small pamphlet wherein you have indirectly attacked an ashram in punjab you ought not to have done this it is vilification forget the past it is not a noble act for a sanyasi petty minded householders only will behave like this sanyasa is magnanimity in future don't do anything of this kind it indirectly affects me how is your health i want my disciples to mind their own business and not to waste their energy and time in caviling at others i want them to have a broad vision to acquire balance of mind and cultivate the spirit of tolerance and forgiveness the letter continues your work will suffer if there is even a little agitation keep silent and work with undivided attention have no connection with anyone let everything end peacefully forget everything you are still very weak you are swayed or tossed by words jugglery become adamantine tit for tat is the nature of householders and not sanyasins to bear insult and injury is the swabhav of sanyasins that is spiritual strength that is the balance to be moved by trifles to worry for months and to waste energy in a useless direction is not wisdom keep quiet never think of old affairs you are wasting your energy by thinking in wrong directions this will interfere with our smooth work stop selling the remaining copies of the pamphlet and destroy them the founder of the ashram is my dear friend brother you must not do anything that can affect him in the least even indirectly you are conscious of certain harmful things that are written here written there forget everything rest in peace don't bring out any such books write purely on philosophy yoga bhakti and vedanta don't bring out tracts of this nature even though you are in the right when the other party is aggrieved you must be sympathetic don't bring out such pamphlets even if you have good materials be careful when the party feels a lot how can you poke or rake up the matters again and again it is not the dharma of a sanyasin how long do you want to continue this sort of business keep the mind cool and direct your attention to your pub- publications meditation and other useful work rise above criticism i am not interested in useless arguments but i am concerned only with quick action and obedience i do not want my disciples to be upset by criticism hence my s- strong exhortation this affair is serious i want you to keep the absolute silence in future this needs your immediate action i don't want to hear your arguments justification etc the matter must be absolutely stopped i may be partial and unjust you need not send me a reply but kindly see that you act up to my request immediately without fail sanyasa is for peaceful and constructive work what more shall i write to you are you the atman or the mind and body even if you have read 1001 times all my writings still you identify yourself with the mind and the body people can criticize your body and mind you yourself dislike your body and mind 
those who criticize your body are your real friends then why do you get agitated you are weak ignore criticisms why do you brood over the past this this is a habit this is a bad habit you can't have peace of mind rise above criticisms and remarks do good to that man who wants to poison you and kill you put it into practice you have learned many things from that unhappy unpleasant occurrence that was worrying you it was in the grand plan for you to gain some experiences out of evil comes good it has given you strength and wisdom now rest in peace and work like a lion joy bliss and power strength splendor and glory are your divine heritage think you are the emperor of the world face difficulties boldly draw inner strength god has given you special favor he has made you a brahmachari and cut off all ties and made you absolutely free when there is when where then is room for lamentation despair sorrow worry or depression smile cheerfulness peace divine service yogic activities dissemination of knowledge form part and parcel of you now i am always at thy feet at thy feet to serve thee be assured be assured be assured jump in joy dance in ecstasy walk like a lion radiate joy peace and strength to all around constancy and gratitude i can never forget the services done to the divine mission by my disciples even if for some reason or other they go away from me i do not forget the work done by them they continue to live in my heart the letter continues never change your opinion i am thy servant well wisher friend brother even if you leave me i cannot leave you i won't leave you you always reside in my heart you are dear to me always i cannot utter any harsh word to anyone if anyone utters a harsh word i feel for that man i want to correct him you may experience this you might have experienced this i am grateful to to the lord who has endowed me with at least a ray of this virtue i do not crave for higher attainments the lord has given me this quality it is his mercy now the whole matter is clear feel his mercy and grace i am myself going to the post office and posting this letter it is very difficult to understand the mind of a man even though you move with him very closely for years together and to understand even one's own mind god alone knows the real culprit you know me full well by close contact it would have been a nice thing to drop the correspondence concerning the bogus letter altogether and you ought to have talked to me about it privately when you come down here even though you have reason to suspect from the signature and the envelope this is all unnecessary botheration to you to me and to all there is no time for you or for me to look into these matters and to waste our time and energy in these worthless topics we should utilize every second of our life in his service and meditation you ought to have had a strong belief that i will never write such a letter to you you have failed here it does not matter man learns and grows by mistakes even if a thousand people poison my ears and mind by speaking ill of you i want here your glory to me to india and to the world you cannot get away from evil this world is a strange world we have to learn many lessons one of the disciples of the lord jesus betrayed the lord many obstacles will come to the growing aspirant at every step we will have to show our strength do not be agitated by little things be cheerful smile walk boldly think and feel that nothing has happened don't worry about little things you have to do many great actions yet prakriti is preparing you in a variety of ways feel this be grateful to the lord these things have happened yet i cannot leave you or shri b or shri a or shri y all grow by committing mistakes and blunders you must forget the past entirely as i have written above i shall arrange for your residence in brahmand ashram and supply separate food for you you need not mix with anybody some work you can do for the divine plan you cannot eliminate 
evil persons from any part of the world wherever you go you will have to live amidst them amidst them but have atma bhav this will change the situation you you should try to love all even the worst man who wants to destroy you that is sanyas a sanyasin is one who feels that he has no body we should live amidst amidst people who want to destroy us amidst unfavorable surroundings and then work and meditate then only can we grow then only can you have the unruffled mind of a sage for this you must have tremendous inner spiritual strength and faith through sadhana my attitude towards dissension among disciples one of my students wrote a bogus letter with my false signature to another important worker at madras that disturbed and upset the person here is the letter showing my method of work for establishing peace and proper understanding the letter was dated the 8th september 1937 it clearly explains my attitude the nature and method of my work even if the whole ashram is affected i stick to my principle which is underlined as i cannot hurt the feelings of anyone even if in my dream i love all even the worst man who aims at my life even if students leave me i cannot leave them i unite the workers with my spiritual glue om namo narayana narayana mantra and prayers here is the complete text of my ever mentioned letter outlining my attitude beloved shri swami ji pranams i have not written any such letter to you it is a forged letter kindly compare this signature very carefully with others you will find out the thief kindly send me the letter per registered post for my perusal i presume it must be a typed letter can you make out whether it is typed in our machine or any other machine or by whom in our group some days ago there was a trouble here swami b created some mischief so i have asked him to leave the ashram shri swami a and r his friends also have left the place they are all living now in rishikesh they have planned this mischief to create some ill feelings between you and me and to drive out shri swami why their enemy this is their plan i presume now shri b is deadly in inimical towards this ashram and somebody has set fire to the bed of shri swami and also you ought to have understood immediately swami ji will never write such a stiff letter possibly it is some mischief by others everything will be all right be not troubled when you come here you can live separately in brahmand ashram you need not take meals from our kitchen i shall make special arrangements for your food as soon as the work is over come here immediately you need not wait even for a single moment do not worry a bit about the forged letter it is the mischief of scandal mongers he who does wrong action will reap the fruits thereof the law of karma is inexorable i wanted to send you a wire don't worry it is forgery it is a mischief by someone letter follows then i thought a detailed letter would explain matters clearly raking up the issue does not solve problems i do not usually entertain complaints there will be no end for the arguments given by different groups of persons i know well that an inquiry will worsen the situation just for the satisfaction of the persons concerned in the plot i made some inquiries on the subject and gave my conclusions in the letter reproduced below i allow time to improve the situation the letter continues i called this morning all the inmates of the ashram and inquired into the matter no conclusion conclusion has been arrived at god only knows the real truth i have no clear why and powers to find out the culprits you can judge yourself as to who the culprit is can you make out the real man from the style of typing even if you spout out conclusively the man will not admit do not fail a bit anything now be cheerful everything is false some mischief has been done out of jealousy it is very difficult to find out the mischief makers you need not come here soon if there is work here work there on account of this perturbed condition of mind caused by this affair be cool do sufficient work collect all the rays of the mind and be calm forget the past do as much work as possible 
plunge yourself in work do not be agitated these little difficulties and disturbances come in the way to strengthen you to strengthen me we should not be disturbed all these matters happen only to make us strong it is all for your growth and improvement only one thing i have found out you become agitated soon as soon as i read your letter i was extremely surprised i could not make out to whom you were writing because i never wrote to you anything of the kind even if you have found out that to be my signature even if the envelope was bearing my own handwriting you should have thought that someone has done a mischief even supposing i have written such a letter i would have done it for your own good or for the good of someone you have hopelessly failed i cannot hurt the feelings of anyone even in dream even that man who is injuring me to the extreme i am developing this one virtue be sure of this always even if such thing happens in future way to success when I, whenever i take up any work i finish it at any cost whenever i start writing a book i complete it somehow or other whenever i take up a book for study i complete it before taking up another work i never leave anything half done i concentrate on the subject and think intensely without distraction i am firm steadfast and steady i have intense application to work i have tenacity and intensity of purpose how to convert the nature of a man honor those who are bad characters serve the rogue first treat him as a future saint as a saint as a saint himself this is a way to purify your heart and to elevate him also i take a special delight in serving such people carefully i always keep around me any number of people who would abuse me vilify me insult me and even try to injure me i want to serve them educate them elevate them and transform them i address them in the most respectful terms i claim the rogue or the thief as a saint and publicly honor him he would be ashamed to continue his evil doings persistently tell an ill-tempered man you are a sant murti a man of peace he would be ashamed to lose his temper call a lazy man you are a dynamic worker and he would throw off his laziness and plunge into service this is my method the praise should come from the very bottom of your heart you must give your soul force to every word you must sincerely feel that behind the apparent negative quality you must sincerely feel that behind the apparent negative quality there is a resplendent positive virtue latent in the man then both of you will be benefited my view of gundas good people are already virtuous i will have to correct and mold gundas only this is my special work gunda is a negatively virtuous man he exists to glorify the virtuous gunda also is lord krishna Lord Krishna says in the Gita, "Dutam chala yatam asmi." I am the gambling of the cheat. Rudri says, "Tas karanam pataye namaha." Prostrations to the Lord of Thieves. I keep in the ashram all sorts of students. The world calls me a guru for thieves and rogues. Glory to the divine mission. the spiritual vibrations of this holy center convert them as divine beings yogis and saints destroy abhiman egoism it is well to remember that sattva rajas and tamas have their own hooks that keep the sadhaka back and prevent him from soaring into the realms transcendental the sattvic hook is the most subtle of all and therefore most difficult to discern and detect with sanyasa floats the sanyas abhiman it might allow the student a greater freedom to roam a little higher than others but he is also bound with tyaga creeps in tyaga abhiman most subtle and most dangerous almost impossible to get over similar is the case with seva abhiman egoism takes many many shapes sanyasa tyaga and even seva is transformed by it into its cloak the sadhaka who would like to strive for realization of the self would do well to guard himself well and not allow quarters to these subtler forms of abhiman an ideal teacher i am ever a thirsting student i am not a teacher but god has made me a teacher the students have made me a teacher 
I make my students soon as teachers. I am such a teacher. I treat them in respectable terms as Maharaj, Swamiji, Bhagavan, Narayan. I treat them as my equals. I give them equal seats. I am such a teacher. I allow them to learn from my own life. I make them Mahans and servants of humanity. Presidents, lecturers, writers, Swamis and Yogis, founders of spiritual institutions, poets, journalists, propagandists, divine scavengers, health and yoga culturists, typists, yoga kings, atma samrats, karma yogi viras, bhakti bhushans, sadhana ratnas. I am such a teacher to all seekers after truth. Come, come, my friends. My call is irresistible. It has transformed countless lives. Do not waste this precious life in playing cards and idle gossiping. Give up hot debates and arguing. Destroy all pleasure centers. Abandon the desire for comfort. Set fire to the fuel of lust. Destroy the fortress of egoism. Be quick, be quick, friends. Sing the Lord's name day and night. Now take a plunge in the ocean of bliss and enter the illimitable domain of the Atma within. Come, come, my friends, take the plunge, be quick. Tarry not, delay not, enjoy the wisdom bliss.